Today we're making two big announcements. One is the long-awaited age of Homo naledi, how old those fossils were, which has been a question that's been around for several years. And we're announcing the discovery of a second chamber of Homo naledi fossils in the same rising star system, but distant from it. And perhaps most importantly, inside of it, amongst other individuals, is the skeleton of an adult male that we're calling Neo. Now, the age of Homo naledi, it's very young. It's surprisingly young. Scientists have been trying to guess how old those fossils should be based on how they look for several years, and most have guessed in the millions of years. Some people guessing over two and a half million years. They're not that old. This population of Homo naledi is between about 230,000 and 330,000 years ago. That doesn't mean the species isn't older than that, but it's come down through time surviving. Now what's important about that, that's the same time where we think that we have the origins of modern humans right here in southern Africa. So there's the possibility that Homo naledi met and even interacted with the ancestors of modern humans. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal to archaeology too, because from this time onward, we don't know who made which archaeological industries. It complexifies the problem. Having a second chamber is important because it might add value to the idea that Homo naledi was deliberately disposing of its dead. The chamber is almost identical. It's just about as hard to get to as the original Denaledi chamber. And so it may add to the idea that Homo naledi was doing something that until 2015 we thought was unique to modern humans. I, I hope no one is upset or pissed off about a great discovery like this. This discovery adds information to the reality of the past. And what I hope scientists do, even if they have vested interests in certain lines of thought or ideas do, is take this evidence and reevaluate the hypotheses that they're working on. We found that animals are complex, that they'll adorn nests and such, and things like birds are incredibly complex. We found that animals mourn. What this really does is take away really one of the very last things that we thought separated us from that animal kingdom. We are part of nature, and I think that's one of the profound implications that Homo naledi uh, has for humans. Homo naledi must have, based on its morphology, originated way back in time. If our current story is correct, it must have originated prior to 2 million years, maybe even prior to 2.8 million years, because it's actually primitive to some of the fossils people are claiming are early Homo at those ages. And then it's come down in parallel to that easy story that I just told you. We don't know how it's interacting with those species. It's, it's effectively been invisible to us until it exists all the way down in time at two to 300,000 years. Remember that date? That date corresponds with when most archaeologists and paleoanthropologists and genetics is suggesting we see the rise of modern humans. And a lot of people argue that rise is right here in southern Africa. But now there's another species here. Everything is very complex from this moment onward. Neo it gives us a real look at what the body and face of this incredible new species uh, looks like. Um, it tells us we are a little bit wrong. We had guessed there was a little bit more nose. Uh, actually, Homo naledi has a little flatter, even more primitive face than we thought, which is one of the reasons that we place it further back in the sort of the family tree of relatedness uh, to earlier hominids. It's clear that parts of, of Homo naledi from Neo are, are very, very, very primitive. Amongst the most primitive we see in hominids and other parts are surprisingly advanced. They in fact are comparable mostly with us as humans.